Four years since Hurricane Irma, some parts of the first coast are still recovering. Boy, it's been four years. Images like this still play in many homeowners' minds. Those of you who live through this, this is downtown, where the water, as you can see, is several feet deep. Homes from San Marco to Clay County were flooded. Insurance loss estimates hit nearly $10 billion. This for Dex reporter Aaron Farrar joins us live in San Jose. And Aaron, that's just one area that flooded that FEMA doesn't consider a flood zone. Exactly, and because of that, some analysts are saying that FEMA's maps are outdated. According to one insurance agent, he says despite those maps, if you live in Florida, technically you live in a flood zone. However, whether insurance is required and how much that's going to be depends on the risk in that particular area. Flood zones are changing, some faster than others, especially after recent hurricanes like Ida, Irma, and Michael. Federal law requires FEMA to renew flood maps at least every five years and update them if needed. Flooding is very unpredictable, and you never know where it's going to happen. Uh, but the higher risk area that you're in, of course, you have to carry flood insurance uh, by mortgage company requirements. City Councilman and insurance agent Matt Carlucci says not every flood zone in Florida requires a homeowner to have flood insurance, but it's a good idea to have it no matter where you live. For example, if you live in a zone labeled X, that means you're in an area that has a low or moderate risk of flooding and are not required to have insurance. However, Carlucci says up to 30% of insurance claims recently came from zones like this. An area such as AE is considered a high-risk flood zone and flood insurance is required. Living in a high-risk flood zone means there is a 1% or greater chance of flooding every year. These kinds of areas have a 1 in 4 chance of flooding during a 30-year mortgage. Many flood maps are changing over the years because of the way the climate is changing and strong storms continuously hitting the same areas. A sea level rise is affecting flood zones, and, and the maps will have to be updated on a continual basis. But the other problem is the more non-permeable areas as our community continues to, to be developed. And so the more development, the less permeable areas for the water to be absorbed in, in the event of a flood or a bad rainstorm, and that can lend itself to flooding conditions. When it comes to how much flood insurance will cost you, FEMA considers your household's distance to a flood source, the types and frequency of flooding, and your property's characteristics, like the cost to rebuild. Carlucci also says there are a couple of things that you should know when it comes to flood insurance. So for the first thing is if you don't have insurance, but you're planning on investing in it, you need to know that any new policy takes 30 days to become effective. The only change with that, though, is if you're buying a new house and that area is going to require you to have flood insurance, yet that policy that you end up getting will actually will actually take effect on the day of the closing of your new house. Reporting live, I'm Aaron Farrar, Channel 4, The Local Station.